Hi everybody, it's Julie. Welcome to this month's newsletter article. I'm going to be doing an overview of the We Are Memory Keepers Heat Wave tool. I know, the minute I saw the name of this tool, I started singing that song. <laughs> Don't worry, I won't start singing and burn your ears. <laughs> This is a tool for adding foil accents to your project. It's a little bit different from the previous tools that we have overviewed at ellenhudson.com. It comes with its own pre-pack of foil. There's a 20 sheets of four by six foil and it is uh, a variety pack. So you get some different colors that you can play with. And I think it's awesome they included that. The tip is domed and you just need to be mindful of that. I'll explain more about that in a minute. It does have a lid for safety purposes and it's battery operated. So you do need to provide three AA batteries and just load them according to the diagram and then pop the back cover in place. And then I can go ahead and take the cap off and go ahead and turn the switch on and set it aside to preheat. So I'm going to use some washi tape here. I'm just going to neutralize it against my hand because later on when I remove it, I don't want to mar the surface of my project or totally crumple up that piece of foil. And I cut a smaller piece of foil because when I'm experimenting and I want to see what I'm going to get, I don't like to use the whole piece of foil. I know I'm just kind of uh, frugal that way. <laughs> So now that I've got it anchored down with the washi tape, I'm gonna hold the tool. This is my first test drive with it. I'm gonna hold it straight up and down because that tool is not very pointed. It is domed and it's, that means it's slightly curved. It's about three millimeters uh, wide in size. And I just wanna get as much surface of that tip against the surface of the foil. And I'm drawing very slowly. And I will say, I had to remind myself to really slow down with this tool. And I could tell when I was going too fast. Now there is a little bit of drag from the tip because of the heat and warping the foil as it moves along and activates the foil and applies it to the paper surface or whatever surface you're working on. Um, I discovered that it was really a bad idea to go over my lines. If I felt that I didn't cover it very well, I was probably not going to be able to get dead on again you know, with that kind of accuracy to go over the lines without having some extra outside the line squiggles there. So it is hard to go back over your work if you feel like you missed some spots. So just make sure when you're doing this that you go slowly enough to really uh, transfer the foil over to your paper surface. So don't go too fast, especially when you're doing your handwriting. And it's better to hold that tool in more of an upright position, not completely upright, maybe a slight angle is fine, but if you try to hold it like a regular pen, you're gonna have trouble. So I decided to go ahead and try the tool with the stencil. This is a one that has some block lettering to it, and I love the look of these block letters. So I thought it would be fun to trace the outline. I love that it has ruling guides on the stencil. And this is really great because you're moving the, the pen tool so slowly, it's nice to have the guidelines of the stencil. And I didn't melt the sides of the stencil with the heat of the tool, which I thought was really interesting, but it held up just fine. I didn't have any issues with melting the stencil at all. And I just traced the perimeter of the letters, used the ruling guide to shift my stencil up when I needed to, and I filled in the gaps. Now it's a very different look from the using the Heidi Swap Mink tool or a laminator to apply those types of foils. But you do need to be aware that the Heat Wave foil only works with this tool. You can't use other brands of foil. You can't use the Mink foil or the iDeco, uh, the iCraft Deco foil um, with this particular tool. You have to use the Heat Wave foil. So I thought it would be interesting to see if I could actually make a card using the stencil. So I came up with an idea that was short and quick because I didn't want to spend too much time uh, using the tool because you do have to move slowly and I thought well if I wanted to mass produce something what would I do and I decided I would spell out ho 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 with the stencil and just line it up and then fill in those letters and it was going to give it kind of a sketched foil look and I realized I was not going to get a complete solid effect of the foil when I'm using this tool because I'm just filling in by creating my own drawn line. So when I remove the tape here and show the results, you're gonna see that I have a kind of a sketched look. When I tried to fill it in completely, I just could not get a complete, perfectly filled in uh, solid block of foil. So I decided that I had to modify what I was anticipating for the end result on my design. And I was very happy with what I got once I realized this is what I was gonna um, end up with. And 
modified my design accordingly. So now I wanted to take another stencil that I have. This is a design that's 12 by 12 and I cut it apart into smaller stencils and I wanted to see what would happen if I use this. So I think it's really cool that you can use other stencils in your arsenal. I found it worked best with stencils that have a little bit wider opening, you know, not super tiny details. And I decided to do part of the triangles in gold and I used a, one piece of washi tape so I could keep that stencil in place and not move it and then remove that foil and bring in another color of foil to get some more of these triangular shapes. I didn't want to do the entire background. I just wanted to get an assortment kind of random of scattered gold and red foiled triangles to create the foundation for my card. And I thought that this worked really cool. I loved the end result. And I just kept lifting the stencil and moving the foil. And it did help to work with a small piece of foil because that way I could see where I had gotten foil applied to the other areas because of course you can't see through the foil. But this is a great way to use up any scraps of foil that you have from the heat wave tool that are laying around. And it's fun to mix up the colors. And I just went with red and gold to keep it simple, but I thought it turned out pretty cool. And then when I removed the stencil, I saw a spot where I had tried to go over it again, where I had missed and hadn't you know, slowed down enough. And I got foil in a spot where I didn't like it. So I thought, well, you know what? It's not gonna hurt to go in there and try to scrape it away with the tip of my X-Acto knife and see what happens. And once I did that, I found that I was able to remove the foil right there on that spot very carefully and accurately. And then I took my Tombow eraser tool. This is a really cute uh, eraser. It's called the Zero Eraser, and it's super, super fine, so it can get into tight areas. And I just used that to buff the marks down where I had used the X-Acto knife to scrape away that foil, and it just helped smooth the paper back out again. So unless you were looking really, really carefully, you would not know that I had that little boo-boo. <laughs> so I thought that was pretty spiffy. And then when I finished the card, I just took some um, different elements that I thought would really accent and allow the foil background to show. And I thought it turned out super cool. I love this design. It's very modern looking, very contemporary. So I did uh, want to try freehand writing again. So I decided to stamp this really cute image from That's Amore by Avery L. And I just stamped it in black archival ink. And then I decided to hand write That's Amore along the top with a piece of foil uh, that was cut down from other pieces that I had been experimenting with. And again, I'm trying to remember to go slowly. And this is the thing that you have to remain consistent about. And I found you know, it really was a good idea to use the washi tape to keep that foil nice and taut against the surface of my project. Now you could use your fingers too, but you also want to make sure your fingers don't get so close there when you're holding down that foil that you burn your hands with the heat of the tool. So it's very important to watch out for that tip. It does get very hot, hot enough to burn. So when I pulled that away, I could see, hey, I actually went slow enough. I got perfect writing there covered in foil and this is a very different gold finish but I'm going to use up the rest of that piece because I don't want to waste any. I'm just going to reposition it down below and use the heat tool again or the heat wave tool to go ahead and draw some wavy you know little ocean waves there or water waves. I should say canal waves right because in Venice that's what they do on those gondolas. <laughs> <laughs> trying to remember okay yeah I've never been to Venice but uh, that's supposed to be what it is a gondola right <laughs> I wanted to add some more red heart so I took another scrap of the red foil and just made an eyeball guess as to where that was gonna land based on uh, what I saw beneath it and like I said using a smaller piece really helped if I wanted to switch out colors and add uh, more accents uh, for contrast and interest on the design. But I thought that turned out super cute. And as you can see it reflecting there, it's a different kind of foil finish. It's almost a luster finish. It's very pretty, but it's very different from the other foils like the mink foil and the iCraft deco foil that we've used in the past. Now I did want to show you that it does show up very well on black and dark cardstocks. I didn't write slowly enough in this example. I was just testing it out quickly to see what I would get. And it does produce a nice high contrast foiled luster effect on the dark cardstock. So that's just something to keep in mind. I just needed to go slower. You can see more still shots at the InTouch newsletter blog. All the supplies are available at ellenhudson.com. And thanks for watching.